Thanks, Eduardo. And um, you summed it up perfectly. I was just going to say that I'm taking my Colto hat off for this presentation and putting my Austral Fisheries hat on. Um, I'm employed by Austral Fisheries, um, a Perth-based Australian fishing company. Um, and today I'll be giving you a little bit of a background to our Heard Island fishery and our, um, our dealings with whales over the past few years. Um, a little bit of a background uh, to the way that the Australian toothfish fisheries work. We've got two Australian Patagonian toothfish fisheries. Uh, the first one, which I won't be talking about today, is the Macquarie Island fishery, um, located south of Tasmania. Uh, this fishery is a relatively small toothfish fishery of about 450 tonnes per annum. Um, uh, we haven't seen whales depredating in this fishery at all. Uh, and we've been fishing there along with our uh, other Australian colleagues, Austra Australian Longline, since 1994. Um, our main toothfish fishery is the Heard Island toothfish fishery, located about 4,000 kilometres southwest of Perth, uh, on the Kerguelen Plateau, which abuts up to the uh, Kerguelen Island fishery that Paul was just talking about. Um, uh, we as Austral Fisheries have been fishing here since 1996. Um, and a little bit of a history uh, for the Heard Island fishery um, and the way it's run. So in Australia, there's two major quota holders uh, for Patagonian toothfish, uh, Austral Fisheries and Australian Longline. And we own those uh, statutory fishing rights in perpetuity. The Heard Island fishery uh, began as a trawl only fishery uh, in response to IWL uh, not being implemented uh, in those early years. So um, we weren't actually allowed to use long lines because of the increased risk to seabird mortality. And uh, those two trawl vessels in the Heard Island fishery operated on their own until 2003, where Australian long line were granted a long line permit. And uh, since this time, we've been working on a transition from this fishery, phasing out trawling and increasing our long lining uh, portion of fish and you can see in the graph um, first of all the TAC is highlighted by the green line um, relatively stable over the years and uh, the red bars indicate the illegal fishing that occurred in the mid to late 90s up until the mid 2000s um, we all know that story so I won't touch on it today um, as you can see the pink lines have been decreasing over the years and the blue lines, which are the long line caught catch, increasing. Um, it's probably important to note that um, Austral Fisheries have a dual purpose, long liner trawler vessel called the Atlas Cove. Um, we commissioned that vessel last year um, with the long term view of that we've also got a nice fish fishery at Heard Island and we're also committed to undertaking an annual trawl survey in the Heard Island fishery that assesses the juvenile abundance of toothfish and ice fish on the Heard Island Plateau. Um, so with the, the need to undertake the ice fish fishery when they're available and the survey, um, we commissioned a dual purpose vessel. Um, so the only uh, trawl caught toothfish that we'll be looking at catching over the, uh, the next little period um, in the future will be bycatch from the ice fish fishery and uh, maybe 20 to 30 tonnes annually from the toothfish survey. Um, the rest of it will be a long line fishery. It's, the the data is actually in this, uh, this graph, but it, you can't see it, but we've also tried traps in the Heard Island fishery um, from the mid 2000s to about 2011 was our final trip, 2012. Um, we did about four trips to Heard Island and the French industry also chartered the same vessel in 2010 to take it to Crozet. Um, we, we trialled at Crozet about 15 to 20 different variations of traps. Um, we found ones that worked better than others, which was great. Um, we learned a lot, but unfortunately uh, catch rates weren't uh, commercially viable. And uh, you know, with, with long lines, we, we catch between five and seven tonnes per day. Uh, with the traps we found um, by the end of our five or six years of experimenting we were only catching up to a ton a day so we just couldn't get by on that given the long distances we have to steam to get to this fishery. Um, this year the Heard Island fishery will be operating with 
uh, three longliners plus the dual purpose vessel, so effectively four longliners in the fishery, and uh, the current TAC is uh, 3,405 tonnes. Um, we first started seeing sperm whales in the Heard Island fishery in 2011. Um, we've seen them in groups of the, the lone bulls up to groups of six, uh, but we've only seen them from April to July. Um, and the little graph at the bottom um, indicates uh, our longline season, which begins, sorry, our, our toothfish season, which begins in December and finishes in November as per the Camelar uh, season dates. Um, under our Australian licence, we're allowed to trawl and trap for toothfish year round. Um, when we first started longlining in 2003, we were given a, a core season of May through to the middle of September. And over the, the last few years, we've um, managed to extend that season uh, on the basis of not killing many seabirds um, to now being able to fish from the 1st of April uh, out to the end of November. Um, so we believe that the movement from a trawl-only fishery uh, to now what is a, a longline-only fishery um, has increased the uh, availability of, uh, of cheap or a free feed for the whales. And uh, also, it used to be two trawl vessels. Now it's four longline vessels operating over a wider area uh, over a, a longer pe a period of time than the, the in one long longliner was initially when the fishery first opened. Um, quite scarily, last year we saw our first, in 2014, we saw our first killer whale. Um, it circled the boat a few times and then kept on its merry way. And last year we saw a pod of killer whales um, Again, they hung around for a, uh, an hour or so and, and moved on, so perhaps they were just passing through. Um, the skipper didn't seem to think that they had any obvious uh, noticeable differences in catch, so we're, we didn't think they were depredating. Um, the, the whale sighting rate over the past five years has been relatively stable, which I'll, I'll go into next. And um, because of this low sighting rate, um, it's also a low depredation. Uh, that's happening and so we haven't actually quantified uh, or estimated what the whales are actually taking because we don't believe it's a, a large number. Um, and interestingly, as Paul pointed out uh, just before, that the, the Kerguelen Island fishery is so close and uh, butts right up to the, the Heard Island fishery, um, yet they're seeing um, a much bigger problem, especially with the sperm whales there. Um, we're not too sure why. Um, we have a few theories, but perhaps one of them might be that um, between the Heard Island and the Kerguelen uh, Islands, that there's the circum Antarctic circumpolar current that runs right through, that may be acting as a natural barrier. Who knows? Um, this graph was, uh, sorry, this, this table was produced by Dirk and I last year. Um, it outlines our whale, um, whale presence rate in terms of the number of sets in the longline fishery. Um, with the years um, in each of the rows and the columns being our longline season months from April through to November. So as I mentioned previously, we're only seeing them from April to July, these sperm whales, um, and out of quite a low uh, proportion of our sets from um, kind of one and a half to three and a half percent over the last few years. Um, I've added another couple of columns that indicates um, our longline fleet expanding over that time as well. Um, and then the, the portion of longline catch across the whole fishery. So yeah, last year we caught, or the last two years, we've caught close to all of our toothfish with lines and um, the, the sighting rate is about 1.5% to 2%. In 2013, um, both our company and Australian Longline uh, agreed that we'd begin voluntary move-on provisions when we sighted a sperm whale. Um, and under Paul's guidance uh, that he's done with the French, uh, Initially, we were moving 20 nautical miles uh, immediately upon sighting them. We'd either haul up the line if we had a small number of sets left or if there was still a fair bit of line in the water, we'd buoy it off and drop it and, and run away and, and come back uh, at a time later when they, they'd moved on. And that seems to be working. Uh, last year, 20 miles wasn't doing it, so we increased that to 50, and that seemed to do the trick. Um, what we're recording in terms of depredation or, or whale sightings, um, we began taking photos in 2013. Um, we've been passing those on to our French colleagues um, uh, to compare with their ID catalogue. Um, at the moment, there have been no matches, but uh, in fairness, 
there's probably only four um, verifiable whales um, that have a, a good enough quality photo to, to compare at the moment. So we haven't got a lot of, of data there. Uh, we've got 100% observer coverage on our boats, two observers every trip, and um, they fill out um, marine mammal sighting forms. Um, so there's date, species, position, um, the number of whales and whether they have uh, seen any evidence of depredation. Um, both uh, the Antarctic Division uh, and ourselves as, as industry are, are kind of looking at this quite closely ourselves. We don't want it to increase. Um, and the map in the background is just something that I've plotted with um, our, our whale sightings over the years, uh, the last five years. Um, it's, it seems to indicate from, from our data anyway that there might be a, a west to east movement as the season goes on uh, and also uh, a preference to the slopes uh, of the plateau but that just might be a function of where we've been fishing over that time um, because as I said there's not a lot of data to support it. Um, we're, we're still very early on in this, in this game against the whales. Um, we haven't got a, as large of a problem as some of the other fisheries. Um, one of the things we might be looking at in the near future is setting up hydrophones to detect presence and absence in, in the fishery, both when our vessels are there and, and perhaps where they're not over the summer period as well. Um, that's the background to Heard Island. Thanks for listening. <laughs>